Uh, hi guys, this is Erwin here, uh, Erwin Howe, the website whisperer on the online prosperity show. And today we're talking about the human psychology side of web design, because your website is your best salesperson. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the website whisperer himself. Erin, Erin, how are you doing, my man? Awesome, Prosser. How are you doing, my friend? Fantastic. I mean, since the last time we saw you, you've grown. Your business has grown to over seven figures, and you've learned some few magic tricks that you're going to be sharing with us today. Now, okay. obviously, Erin, yep. Erin, tell me a little bit about how you got started with uh, chromatics and um, what it is that you're working on currently. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, uh, chromatics has actually been a bit of a history lesson now. I think it's about 13, 14 maybe years now uh, and stuff like that. It was actually started like every other person in their backyard or in the garage kind of thing. Um, and uh, I still remember actually, uh, my first website was $300. Um, and we've definitely come a far long way from that, um, just building sites. But uh, no, I've always been fascinated uh, about digital, uh, all things in advertising. I did my master's in advertising uh, back in the day. I used to work for the top uh, two ad agencies in Melbourne, um, G, uh, George Patterson Wine Art and Cleminger, but no, I just really want, rather than work for the man, you want to be the man and really start something. So um, I came into this uh, chromatics and I guess the story really was, is understanding that a lot of people have big budgets and you think you have to have a big budget to do something really powerful and really successful. No, actually uh, budget is one thing, but if you have the right strategy, you can actually make it go a lot further and so um i mean let's be honest if we did a google search right now of web designers in melbourne or sydney or in australia uh you'll have a lot of views i think uh, i did a search on web design by itself yesterday uh it was over one point something billion search results uh in melbourne it's over 300 uh, million uh, sydney's pretty much the same so the question is how do you stand out how do you make something uh, different to everyone else and uh, and you alluded to to magic uh, as well, um, which is kind of cool because uh, back in 1997, I still remember I was actually uh, in year 12 and this uh, guy, his name's Edwin. If he's listening, hi, Edwin, thank you for changing my life. He said, hey, Edwin, look over here. And out of nowhere, he kind of pulled out, and I can't, I can't do it anymore, but he pulled, I pulled out this card out of nowhere and he got me hooked and absolutely intrigued. And I think what really, what I really love about say advertising, uh, magic tricks and marketing, it's all about that. How does the human mind work? It's all about human psychology. And, and if you can, um, and funny enough, well, it, it's that mastery of attention and direction. And, and funny enough, I know you call it um, direction as well, because you call it misdirection in magic. It's actually the right direction for me. It's actually the wrong direction for you. But all I'm trying to do is get you to look in one spot so I can do something else in another spot for entertainment purposes. But when it comes to web design, I think a lot of people, they focus on that word, web design. They think it's just about design. It's just about look and feel. It's actually much more than that. It's about how to get someone's attention and how to make them take direction. And so really with that heart, and I guess, you know, having seen what the big agencies do with their big budgets, I thought to bring it down to, I guess, small business, uh, medium business, you know, businesses who might not have multi-million dollars to see what I could do to change for them. And that's how I got my name, Website Whisperer. Uh, and I guess my my heart is and my mission is to change the world one website at a time, not because I have to build it. I mean, yes, I do have a team of 15 plus who do that, but my heart is to at least teach and share with people um, that your website is actually your best salesperson. Uh, or is your, is your best presenter. Um, if, you're, if you think you're the best salesperson, uh, I promise you, uh, you take annual leave, you can get sick. Uh, you know, if, if we're talking right here, we're, you know, you're not selling over there, you know, sort of thing. And so your website is there 24 seven, doesn't complain, it's online. When you're sleeping, it's still working, that sort of thing, it is your best salesperson. And if you fix your website, Sometimes it's not a marketing issue. I mean, I know you're a master of SEO, AdWords, and all that kind of stuff, but digital marketing. But 
sometimes you know, can't blame people with digital marketing. I mean, if we're bringing in, you know, the goodies, and I guess the best analogy I can give you is if your bucket has holes in it and you're amazing at getting water into it, you're not going to retain anything. And so that's the biggest bottleneck that I'm here to solve. So people reduce their market wastage and increase their chances of you know, converting more leads or getting even more leads in that way. So, yeah, that's it at a top level. I'll show. Absolutely. And I, I wish I could take you with to every client meeting that I have because <laughs> <laughs> people need to. Twice, my friend. <laughs> now, you mentioned something that actually got me hooked, um, especially when it comes to the creation of websites that actually convert. Now, when you started off with the $300 budgets, what, what was it like? Um, you know, having to maybe put out a rabbit out of a hat with smaller budgets like that. And what is it now like working with people that actually don't necessarily care about what money is going in, but they actually want the result because a lot of people don't know the difference, um, you know, when it comes to that sort of, uh, you know, difference in, in business. Yeah. I use this term beauty and the beast. We've all seen the movie beauty and the beast. You've got, uh, the beautiful bell who just looks good uh, and you've got the beast who oh, is quite powerful and stuff like that and there's nothing wrong with either i'm not saying that if you're powerful uh, you should look good and i'm saying if you look good you're not powerful i'm not saying that i'm saying you kind of need both and i find that uh, with budgets of a smaller number uh, and again there's no disrespect i started doing small sites and for those who are still doing small sites there's a place for them there, there is actually a really good place for them but let's be honest, if the average industry rate, maybe in Australia or overseas and stuff, is usually between $150, I'm not going to say US or AU, but just as an example, um, and again, I'm not talking about freelancers, you know, but I'm just talking about agencies, 150 to 350, depending how big or small you are per hour. How many hours do you really need to spend if we're spending not just for the doing, but for the smart thinking? Because remember, it's not about how much money we spend. It's about how smart the strategy is. And we don't want to punish people for being smart, right? I know some people who are just, oh, let's do things by hourly rate and stuff. Does that mean the faster I am because I've been doing it with more experience that I should be punished compared to, say, the junior who takes three times longer? No, I'd rather pay for the you know person who knows what they're doing and stuff like that. So to me, it's about not being price-driven but about performance driven and stuff like that. So again, $300, I'm not going to lie, was us. We had to use a template of sorts to, to kind of get the operational costs down. Whilst now it's not about templates. It's about how do we custom fit something that helps you. And again, we love using the word ROI. I'm actually just talking about how do we help move the, the needle on the bottom line when we talk about profit, you know, sort of thing. And if we're taking those kind of conversations, it's very different to, design and i think that's the thing i actually wrote an article funny enough on my site that was sharing just about trends and thoughts just about designers and i think web designers need to learn how to do not just web design but web sales because they need to take those sales techniques and that thinking and that marketing into their design it's not just about looking good it has to perform so i think that's the biggest difference yeah. Absolutely. Now we've talked about, you know, other web designers. Now we let's go into the, you know, client side of things where when you help somebody with their website, you want the website to convert. Okay. And science, science tells us that people have an attention span of maybe three to eight seconds. How then do you actually, um, you know, make that maybe thirty thousand or forty thousand dollar website really captivate people's attention in as much as you know defying the laws of gravity or science itself. Yes. Yeah. You say three to eight seconds. I actually say it's like almost like two seconds, one second. You know, sort of thing. Um, you have to pack a punch and be. And here's the key word: intentional with everything you put on a website. Everything. So I'll give you an example. If I was going on a date. I remember the first time I met my missus and stuff like that. Um, everything I put on to look good had purpose. I I put the shirt on. I put the suit on. I had the right watch that matched the exact ring 
that matched my son. Like everything was intentional. It wasn't like, oh, let's just slap like a couple. No, no, everything was crafted with purpose. So why did I have the watch? Well, the watch, uh, this one, um, matched my outfit, which hopefully uh, made me seem a bit more confident. I think that's the main thing. And I, I wanted the ring because it was funny enough, it was a bit of a magic ring. That's a whole other story. But I wanted everything to match. So it had a bit of a story, you know? Keyword is, con is, is intentional, but also concentrated. Kind of like cordial, right? If you're adding water to cordial, you dilute it. And so if you're diluting the message, if you're diluting the attention, if you're delaying the imagery, if you're delaying your products, I mean, aren't we meant to hero our products? Hero our message? Make everything really intentional? That's the biggest difference. And so that's why I'm a bit anti uh, uh, pre made templates that have not had much done to it. Because even technically, let's think about it, right? We want to be intentional with how we build our site for site speed, for SEO. When we intentionally build our sites, so it's not bloated so that you know, your site can scale, things like that. And so that's the biggest one is intentionally in design, make it concentrated. And uh, I guess, how do we get the attention? Because like I, like you said, three to eight, I said two seconds. You need to understand how someone works and hit those points straight off the bat. And I mentioned to you earlier, I talked about um, the three H's, our three H hierarchy and stuff. So, so maybe a great segue into that. Let's just jump into that. There are, I mean, in, in marketing and advertising, you will know the words AIDA. We've heard it all the time. You know, awareness, interest, desire, action. Great concept and it's a great framework to follow. But when I share that with my clients, they don't really understand what that means because number one, uh, some of my clients are uh, marketers um, or they don't know what those terms mean. So let's break it down and make it really simple. I always talk about head, heart, and hand. So what do these represent? Oh, well, actually, in, in the right order, it's actually heart, head, and then hands. Because order matters. So let's break it down. In all decisions that we all make, it is always heart-driven first. As much as you might think it's logical or illogical, or we're visual beings, and we will judge. We'll make a judgment the moment you see something. But after you get all through the warm and fuzzies of the heart, we move into the head. The head then kicks in with the logic. Oh, that, that sounds great. It feels great. Is that true or not? And so we process with our minds. That's why you know, we like proof. We like asking questions because your head's kicking in. But once you've ticked off the heart, we'll call it the, the, the EQ, I guess, with the IQ on the brains, that's when we then make a decision. You know what? Checks out in the heart. I feel right. Head right. Yeah, I like it. Let's take action. Let's be honest. I was talking to a salesperson and uh, the sales guy was saying, Erwin, my job is to make sure that people know me, like me, and trust me. No like trust is really just, it works in the heart area. Yep. And then it also ticks off on the head area. Once that happens, guess what? They will do the transaction. And that's the hands, that's the action. And so you asked me the question, how do we get someone's attention in less than three seconds? And how do we make them do something? It's knowing how to take them through this heart, head, hands journey fast enough with web tricks and stuff. And I'm happy to break down a couple of tips with you and stuff for that, but um, if you like, yeah. Um, because I was gonna say, think about the best first date you ever went on. I used to say, think about the first date you ever went on and it kind of got some weird reactions, but think of the best first date you ever went on. I don't know about you, but let me explain how I met my missus uh, 15 years ago. I was sitting there, I had suited up, I tried to look the best I could because I really had to try to get her attention and stuff like that. She walked through the door and it just felt like real slow amount of time. It just stopped kind of swooshing her hair in a beautiful dress and stuff. Like that. And she sat down. Uh, I said, hi, my name's Erwin. I didn't say on the website whisper, I just said, hi, my name's Erwin, uh, you know, and how are you doing? And so all the usual small talk of the stuff. She started asking me questions. So, so, uh, so what do you do? Uh, and I said, oh, you know, I'm interested in golf. Uh, I love web design. Uh, and so, and I run a couple of companies, so forth, so forth. 
as the night went on, uh, she asked me, to, I kind of unpacked those elements because she was quite intrigued. She said, tell me about um, uh, tell me about the business that you run. Uh, tell me, uh, how long are you playing golf? You, you mentioned some magic tricks and you've been doing that for a while and stuff like that. Tell me about that. And uh, at the end of the night with my um, sweaty hands and stuff like that, um, you know, and um, maybe a lump in my throat, I decided to ask her out for that second day. See, the last minute or two, it might have sounded like I was telling you about how I met my missus. But it's not, because the rest is now history. What I actually explained to you is actually the natural human psychology of the three H's working together. But it started with a capture of attention with hopefully a nice image of me, if you like a nice imagery. I was clear with who I was and what I did. I had content to unpack and also prove with credibility what I said was true. And then I was able to, glad enough I asked, for that second day, ask for that call to action, that close for a better word. Again, we don't pitch marriage off the bat. That's just a bit awkward. We just want to pitch to that next stage. I was talking to a good friend of mine. He's an appointment setter. And he said to me, Erwin, do you know what the point of an appointment setter is? And I said, get the sale. And he goes, no, absolutely not, Erwin. The point, of, the point of an appointment setter is just to get the appointment. You don't need to close. You don't need to share what you do. Just get the next step in the journey. And so my job is to fast forward people through all those natural steps that we all take from the capture to the close and stuff. And how do we do it practically on a website? Well, let's give you a couple of examples because this is great as a concept, but if I'm listening to this, I'm saying, I want to improve my website. What can I do? So capture. Well, what captures you on a website? Could be the imagery. Could be the words. Could be the picture. I know on your site, possibly you have a picture of you. I'm captured by you, your presence, and your confidence. That's wonderful. That's a great capture. But I'm also captured by your clear message and the clean layout that you have on your site. So well done. The second is that kind of clarity. When I come to a website, I don't type in, for example, for me, I don't type in Web Design Melbourne because I'm looking for, not looking for a Web Design Melbourne in Melbourne. I'm looking for a Web Designer in Melbourne. That's why I'm typing those words in. And so... I have a problem and I want you to solve it for me. So my question is, when I come to your website, do I see the problem solved or am I just hearing about you? Because let's be honest, if you came to my website or the Chromatics website or my, um, my other company websites and stuff, you don't care about my brand. You don't care about my team. You don't care about my name and stuff. That all helps. That might help with the credibility part, but at the start you're like, oh, and I've got a problem to solve. Can you solve it? Is there a value exchange? My value exchange is I'm going to give you money, but you've got to solve my problem. And I know that no one wakes out of bed going, I need a web. You know, you don't wake up in the morning going, I need a new website. <laughs> of course. I wake up going, I need more leads. I want more customers. I want more business. You know, I've got to pay my staff. So my question is, are you solving that problem? Or for me, am I solving that problem? So. You could be selling golf bags. You could be selling windows. You could be selling floor cleaner. But what is the problem you solve? Because yes, they need floor cleaner. But the thing is, what you're really selling, what's the result of what you're selling? That's what we need to speak about. So that's clarity of message. Do you have a content to unpack what you say is true? Because you can claim anything. But if you have no content to really put more meat around the bones and you don't have any credibility or proof, then what you're saying is just a statement. I want facts. We said brain, IQ, facts. We want truth. So that's what we want to do and stuff. And so credibility, how does it come out? Awards, accreditations, testimonials, all that kind of stuff, all the way to getting a close. So that's it. Absolutely. And I'm intrigued. I, I should actually um, expect an invoice because I'm getting a really good lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a TED talk. I'm sorry. It sounds like a TED talk. <laughs> All good. Lovely. And, and no wonder you've become the website whisperer, um, um, you know, himself. You know, but when we are um, utilizing all these um, nuances, especially when it comes to mm. websites, do we have to mind whether we're dealing B2B or B2C? Because I've read once that obviously people that are in the B2B space, they want to 
learn and read a lot more text than they would want to see, um, you know, gimmicks and, and, and features on the website. Do you have a distinction whether it's B2B or B2C or yeah. should the brand just come in as they are and then, you know, just try and get, grab people's attention as you have mentioned that? Yeah. I see it not as B to B and B to C. Can I can I give you an option C if that's okay? okay. Yes, yes, go ahead. I should just call it B to H. Right. Because it's always business to humans. Because let's be honest, a B to C, a consumer, is a human being. It's an individual. Right. B to B, yes, you are marketing to a business, but the person interacting with you in that business is still an individual. So it's still a human being. So if we can take human psychology principles, and it's the same principles both ways. So I don't go, well, because it's a business, they don't, they don't think with emotion, they only think logically. They might put more priority on logic because that's what the boss or the board want to hear. But emotion still plays a part. So to me, it's like levers, right? So sure, B2C, we might play up the capture and the, and the creativity of the images and maybe do the Photoshop a little bit more because people eat with their eyes and they want to be intrigued, you know, sort of thing. But still they need a message. Still they want credibility. Still you want to close them, but your close might be different. In B2B, you might be book a demo, visit the showroom. Whilst for the other side, for consumers, it's buy now, add to cart. So it's very different, you know? And can I take it one step further? People yeah. ask me, B to B, B to C is that different? The second is conversion. We talk about this word conversion, converting and stuff like that. And I get this all the time. Erwin, I'm not an e-commerce shop. You know, uh, people who buy from us, it's a long sales cycle, you know, it takes, you know. And so we always teach there's actually two types of conversion. There's what we call transactional conversion and relational conversion. Transactional is like the e-commerce, add to cart, I've got my Air Jordans in there, put in my $200 payment, bam, we're done. It's transactional, bang, 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 we're done, finish. Very fast, heart to head to hands, we're done. But on the other hand, you've got this relational conversion, usually for service business. So for example, even like buying a website and stuff, sometimes you might just go, bang, I just want my first web. No, I'm just shopping around. I'm thinking about it. I'm doing some research because we might be doing on the flip side of next year or or financial year or something like that. Or I need sign off, I need to build a case, that's fine. So maybe like a, like a lawyer, accountant, that, that kind of stuff, that's not straight up that. It's usually a contender. Different techniques, same principles. Lever, how much you do of each one. So say for example, you, you said it very correctly, some people wanna read more, so let's give them more clarity and more context, more credibility. For those who just don't have time because in the industry, Time is money. So for tradies, say for example, tradies don't have time to sit there and read. You know what, I've got a building I need. I just wanna make sure I can get my, my you know, tools and, and uh, materials for that building really quickly. Do you do it? Yes or no? Where's your number? I'm calling you. Time is money. So it's just knowing how to call those leaders. But it's the same principles. It's still all about human psychology and the mastery of attention itself. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, that that is what somebody would have been thinking, um, you know, while they're just sitting there that maybe sometimes we don't need to go all out and create sites that um, obviously whiz bang. But I, I now understand a lot more about, you know, the magic that actually goes into, um, you know, you being called the, the website whisperer, because it's not necessarily about the colors, the photos and the, um, you know, the development. It's the actual human psychology, the person who's communicating and interacting with that website in order for them to um, make that relationship transaction, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. conversion or that, um, you know, transactional uh, sort of conversion. Now, when we're looking at um, the sites that we have sort of seen in and around, um, you know, our day-to-day -day lives, would you say maybe mention a couple of websites that you think are doing it well? Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, just so that people have a real life example of what you actually, um, you know, would give an A plus to a website that's doing it well. Yeah, uh, this is a funny thing. I'm really glad you asked this because I always say 
there is never the perfect website and stuff. And I'll tell you why. Your website is an evolving beast. So at this present time, it might be good. But let's be honest, are you driving the amount of, right amount of traffic there? Is it even the right time to market? Say, for example, it's now, say, like a December. So in June, the traffic's very different. And also the intention to buy is very different and stuff like that. Um, what ha works in one industry doesn't work in another as well. And let's not even talk about like e-commerce and so forth. But let's be honest, there's also many factors that make a website successful. So I'm going to go through a couple of what makes a website successful as opposed to a website itself that works really well. And let me give you a couple of key principles to look into because there are many parts of a website and the only, the biggest problem is people only look at one of a few elements in a website. And unfortunately the, the, the part that, I mean, there's only one part you can see, which is the first one is design. Let's write this down. So design is the part that you get to see what we call the UI the look and feel of a website. And let's be honest, design is subjective. So that's why I'm saying it's hard to say if it's perfect because at the end, the summary of this whole part is you can continuously change everything. Your words need to be updated to reflect the right message. Your images need to be updated to reflect the people and the product and your place accurately. The layout needs to be updated because iOS's desktop screen sizes, devices keep changing. But anyway, that's the summit. Let's go back to the, the point. So design, good design, and what is good, subjective, but make sure it resonates with your target market is all I can say there. Second is actually development, how it's made, what uh, CMS, what content management system that you use uh, makes a big difference of the development side of it. Um, and also how easy it is to use for the the client, the staff, the volunteers who use that site. Uh, marketing effectiveness. See, there's a difference between having a website as a encyclopedia of information and one that actually makes you want to take action. So having some marketing feelings, um, marketing in it, sorry, but also knowing how that works in the scheme of overall marketing. Remember, website is just one piece of the full pie. Okay. Uh, what makes a website successful? The ability for you to make changes yourself. How many sites have you had where you have to go back to a web developer and you can't do anything, right? Basic images, basic content. Yes, that should be done yourself. But if you're doing something structural, of course, you still need your web guy or girl. It's just that you want to make sure it's uh, updatable. Uh, how usable, how easy is it for the customer to find what they need? That's the UX part. That's the fifth point how well or how easy is it for a customer to go through what you need satisfy their needs but also the business needs from a conversion perspective six is security how secure is your site you know what the biggest killer of conversion is the number one worst thing in conversion is i can't see your website so I don't care how good your message, your images, your photo shoot, your video shoot, how well you laid it out, how well it works on all devices, but if your site is hacked and it's not up, no point. That's the number one killer of conversion is I can't even see it, right? Which again leads to number seven is I can see it live, but I can't see it online, aka SEO. So how well is your site built for SEO? Now I'm not talking about just on-site, on-page, off-page, all that stuff, but um, off-site, that sort of stuff, but how well is your site built for SEO? So if I grade a website as a website whisperer, how successful, how good your website is, I will take these factors and obviously before this asking who is your target market, what is your USP, what makes you stand out, I'll grade you out of 10 on each one. And that ends up being your score and stuff. So to me, a successful website is one that does 10 out of 10 for all of them. And you know what? The only client who would actually go 10 out of 10 for all this would have to be a pretty big budgeted website. Because let's be honest, if you have the best looking site built on a great clean code that's scalable with great marketing thinking in it, that is easy to update, 
has a credible user journey that is fully secure and hard to hack and ranks very well, that's asking for your cake and eating it and making someone else pay for it. That's everything. That to me, I have not seen. So I've Absolutely. I, I really like those seven steps. And if you're watching right now, this this stuff is the stuff that a lot of people pay tremendous amounts of money just to get. So I would um, advise that you actually take note. Now, while you were talking, I was thinking of somebody who might have the budget to actually create a website like yours, but has not done anything. And I, I I don't know if you know the website that I'm about to talk about. And I think it would be best if I can just share my screen so you Love can it. see who I'm talking about. Um, have you ever seen this site before? Absolutely. I have actually. I have. <laughs> now, let's play one of your favorite games that you like oh, to play. Great. What What would you do if this was your business? Okay, if this is my business. The best thing that goes above understanding. There's a step between it. You've hit it on the head. I asked another friend of mine who's actually a web agency. And I said, what is the most important part of a website outside of, you know, these points, right? He goes, oh, that's simple, Edward. Branding. Because with the right brand, it trumps everything. Because the brand defines your message, your USP your unfair advantage. It is your credibility. It is your content. And naturally it closes. That's why celebrities, celebrities find it easy to close because you already know who I am, what I do, why I choose me, what I stand for. It is the sum of all that. So imagine, and so a lot of people who have shared um, the, um, that site with me also share on the flip side, someone like an Apple. I know he owns Apple shares as Warren Buffett owns the Apple shares and stuff, but you also have the Samsung share. Well, then on the other hand, they've got the money. They've got the brand name. They've got all those things and stuff. They don't have to care about SEO and stuff because let's be honest, we know their brand name. We'll find it. They're the, what we call the unicorn websites when you have it all, you know, something. But it, it's a great segue to actually great branding and the importance of branding. Remember, a website enhances what you already have and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I just love this flower that just opens up because you never know what you're going to expect and the beauty of it all. I think you've done well here. Now, I know I've put your website on um, the, oh, no, thank you. the screen there just so that people can have an understanding of what it is that we're talking about. T tell us, um, you know, somebody might be, you know, listening and watching this uh, show right now and thinking, wow, these, this is beautiful stuff. What's the best way that people can maybe get to know more about how you work and how you can actually start helping them to create, um, first of all, attractive websites that actually hook their audience and um, makes it easy for people to convert? Yeah, no, for sure. Well, again, we love talking to, I mean, I, we love talking to anyone actually and love helping when it comes to giving any advice. Um, funny enough, we actually received a lot of Google reviews for people who actually say, well, you normally just, you know, someone who would normally inquire with a web agency would normally just reject us, but you give a lot of value. And so I guess our heart is to change the, the world one website at a time. So if we can actually give you any advice, feel free to get in touch and even happy to point you in the right direction. A uh, couple of things. Number one, reach out. Um, and uh, our emails are, uh, I mean, my email's right there, just exactly on the screen there. Hello at promax.com.au. And feel free to reach out to me and say, hey, Erwin, heard this podcast, podcast, uh, podcast sorry, uh, from Prosper. Just want you to have a quick squeeze at our site. More than happy to do so. Um, second is uh, our blog actually has a lot of content that we do love to share uh, in terms of, and funny enough, one we actually just put out is actually the latest trends uh, for you know the coming year and stuff. But again, uh, there's a lot of different details that you can actually get from the site. A lot of helpful tricks uh, as well. Um, and, the th and I guess really at the end of the day, we just love staying connected and stuff. And if you see the little bird on the side that says, get a quick quote and stuff like that, uh, when you uh, pop out on that, um, our contact details are there. So our phone number, email, and form. So any direct contact, we'll love to help out, even give our two cents worth. It might be $4 worth or even more, um, but no, more than happy to help and run a few tests across it for you as well. Even if you never use us, that's more than fine. We're not stressed about that. So yeah.
Fantastic. Now, Erin, obviously somebody watching this might just be thinking, you must eat, sleep, uh, and repeat all about websites. What do you do in your spare time that actually keeps keeps you uh, on top of your game? Yeah, no, for sure. Well, I actually spend a lot of time doing a lot of mentoring, actually. Um, but um, the, the people I, I help and teach and stuff, it's more to do with just business uh, overall. So um, I do have a, another site, erwinhow.com, that is more for business consulting. But I love uh, personal development and I love investing into to that knowledge side of things. So I do spend about 25 hours uh, average uh, per week uh, above what I normally do outside of um, uh, we're building a house at the moment and stuff. Uh, you know, I love, absolutely love uh, golf. Uh, spending time with my kids and stuff like that. Um, so they're the kind of fun bits I love doing and stuff. But yeah, that personal development. Uh, and sometimes I'm not going to lie, I do still watch a magic trick or two on Penn and Teller's Full Us uh, on YouTube. So uh, hey, just keeping it creative, keeping it fun as well. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Absolutely. That was amazing, my man. Right. Now, before I let you go, I just wanted you to maybe um you know just give that one last bit of maybe advice or insight that you uh, might help our small to medium businesses so let's say you know the cyber attacks have been happening in australia recently and it just so happens that somebody cyber attacks the whole internet and they wipe out every website in existence and you have to start from scratch what will be the first two to three things that you would do when you now consider starting a business um, a website from scratch uh, starting a website okay. I, I would say there's a principle to understand first and then funny enough it's actually get your messaging right and stuff because if you don't know your target market what their problem is and you don't have the right message see conversion is not just a copywriting thing and it's not just a design thing it's a layout thing as well but it really starts with just who you are and who you're targeting and stuff so know your target market and then form the right messages, the right images, the right layout, the right brand that kind of covers that. But there's a principle I need everyone to understand. And I feel it's almost like, almost like my life mission to make it really clear. Because everyone that I get a call from always says, can you make me a website? Because I need to be on the first page of Google and get lots of leads. I don't know if people realize they've actually said two things in the one sentence. And I just want to make it really clear for anyone, everyone, because you only need to know one formula in marketing, or actually there's many formulas, but one key formula as a foundation to all. And I call it traffic times conversion rate equals customers. See, traffic is about getting people to your website. So it may that be through SEO, AdWords, social media, that's getting traffic to your website. Uh, it, it can be, you know, inbound, outbound, referral partners, however you do it, you can cold call, call, but as long as you're getting something, but funny enough, have you noticed in all marketing, it always comes back to the one view, your website. Even radio ads nowadays say, they don't go call 1-800, don't they actually say, go to www.whatever.com.au, the website. Conversion is just another word for sales process. And the start of the sales process is always the website. So, make sure when you choose someone to help you with your website, I'd always remember, am I asking for an SEO AdWords social traffic specialist? Or am I looking for a website specialist? And I'm looking for performance or I'm just looking for a presence, just like, like a top level. If you're just going for presence, and I'm not gonna lie, even my very first website 13, 14 years ago was just a template because that's all I could afford. And it's more than fine to get your, your foot up. But like I said before, if you don't continuously upgrade that site, it's kind of like if I kept my first car as the same car I still drive today after 15 years, times have changed. Even my iPhone, I change every two years. You know, you got to keep upgrading it, make it stronger because it's got to move with you. It's like wearing me wearing the same pants I used to wear in uni 20 plus odd years ago. I would have outgrown it. So keep changing and improve. But you can start small. Feel free to go with someone who does smaller websites. If you need a referral, let's have a chat. Happy to help point you in the right direction. If you need a template, go check it out. But know that you do get what you pay for. Make sure that you know all those seven elements I mentioned before. There are ramifications. So templates are bloated. So it will slow you down. 
it's hard to update, hard to upgrade and stuff. You know, there are security issues because you don't know who made the template. That's at that level. Get it done properly. Make sure your message is right. But even like you said, like um, good old um, Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Hathaway and stuff, make sure your brand is good before you even begin. So that's it. Fantastic. Man, I can't thank you enough for the time that you spent with us on the show today with all this information, um, especially the theories that you've come up with, the heart, the hands and the head. We're always doing this in the decisions that we're making within our businesses, within our families and everything else. Why are we not doing that uh, when it comes to our websites and things of that nature? And one other thing that you really uh, drove home was the fact that the website is a 24 seven, uh, you know, salesperson. So you might as well make sure that it is receptive and actually converts while you are, um, you know, uh, in bed resting. So there's people that we've just shown their websites like, um, um, you know, Warren Buffett. Uh, and I think he mentions things like if you're not making money while you sleep, then you're going to be working the rest of your life. So you might as well be utilizing a website that is actually making sure that you are profitable and enjoyable. Now, Aaron, I know you could talk under the uh, the sea and you could whisper to all the websites to wake up, but I think our time on this show has just run out. Thank you so much for your effort today. Pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you having me. Fantastic.